Well, the GB R2 racers were designed and built by the Granville brothers, hence the name GB for their last name, Granville brothers. They can't take all the credit because this particular aircraft behind me, this model GB, was actually designed by a young aeronautical engineer by the name of Howell Pete Miller, who the Granvilles contracted to come up with the fastest airplane in the world at the time. Again, this was 1931, 1932. So Howell Pete Miller designed this aircraft around an engine. He said, what's the most powerful engine available? That was the Pratt & Whitney Wasp, 1,340 cubic inch, 800 horsepower, supercharged nine cylinder radial. So because that was the engine that was available, he built an airplane around it. And in so doing, he made everything to the barest minimum. The wings were short, the tail was short, the fuselage was extremely short, which is why the pilot sits almost all the way in the tail of this aircraft. To balance the heavy engine in the nose, you had to position the pilot all the way in the rear of the aircraft so the airplane would even balance. Needless to say, the airplane flies like it looks. It's very ungainly in the air. It's, it's unstable in, in pitch, it's unstable in yaw. Very few pilots are capable of flying this airplane. One of the most famous pilots that ever lived, an American hero, Jimmy Doolittle, flew this aircraft in the 1932 Thompson Trophy air races, and he set a new world's land plane speed record and won the Thompson Trophy race that year. When he wrote his memoirs later on in life, uh, I Should Never Be So Lucky Again, he talked about this airplane and he said, it was the most dangerous airplane I ever flew. And I'm getting chills when I say that. Because this was a guy that bombed Tokyo. He and the Doolittle Raiders flew B-25s without enough fuel off of an aircraft carrier, bombed Tokyo. It was basically a suicide mission. They were never gonna make it back to the carrier. They had to leave early on their, uh, their flight to Tokyo. So they had no idea where they, they were even going to land. This was not a guy that shied away from adversity. He had set many um, records in aircraft during his aviation career, and he had done many things in aircraft that were that would have caused most people to just hang it up. I know of one incident, for example, he was flying in an air show in a Curtis P6E Hawk, which was a pre-World War II biplane. He took the airplane up, he was putting it through some aerobatic maneuvers, and the wings folded. He bailed out of the airplane on, on a parachute, so Thankfully, he didn't die in that aircraft catastrophe. When he hit the ground, first thing he did is said, where's another airplane? I need to get back up there and finish the routine. So this was not a guy that was afraid of airplanes. So for him to say this was the most dangerous airplane he ever flew means something. At the same time that the Granville brothers built the GBR-1, which is this aircraft, they built a GBR-2, which was a, uh, almost a duplicate of this plane, except it had a smaller engine and it had larger fuel tanks. It was designed to fly in the Bendix Trophy race, which went from Ohio to Long Beach, California. So the airplane needed to be able to fly a long distance at a high speed. Um, it too was just as ungainly to fly as this airplane. 